Motor Week is made possible by Lucas Oil, TireRack.com, and RockAuto.com. Chrysler Corporation has done more to ensure that automotive enthusiasm is alive and well in America than any other manufacturer. And no car defines that passion more than the Dodge Viper RT10. But not all prospective Viper owners are willing to put up with a Rube Goldberg top and side curtains. So how about this car, the Viper GTS? More than just a hard top snake with roll-up windows, the GTS is a modern reincarnation of Peter Brock's legendary Daytona racing coupes. Except that this one makes quick use of any kind of pavement. Though most people could be excused for thinking that the Viper GTS is a pure race car, the big sensuous curves of the RT10 Roadster are even more pronounced on the GTS coupe. Even the shape of the aluminum fuel cap cover, which mimics a vintage race cap, is exaggerated. This gives it an in-your-face look that even its groundbreaking elder sibling is hard-pressed to match. While the simple flowing roofline gives it a symmetry uncommon in the world of big bore muscle cars. But a slick roof and power windows mean more than just weather protection. They also represent big changes for Chrysler's fire-breathing flagship. And we do mean big. Over 90% of all GTS parts are new and do not exchange with those of the Roadster. Chief among them is the heavily modified Pushrod V10. Still displacing 8 liters, the engine now pumps out 450 horsepower and a crushing 490 pound-feet of torque. Changes include a new aluminum block and cylinder heads, a new camshaft, revamped cooling system, and improved fuel injection. A stronger clutch and differential have also been added, though the six-speed manual gearbox is the same. It's still notchy with long throws and harsh changes. But that didn't stop us from racking up a 0-60 to 60 time of 4.6 seconds. The quarter mile blew by in 12.7 seconds at 117 miles per hour. Power explodes from just off idle, but then drops away rapidly after 5,500 RPM. But the engine's thick torque and slow revving nature mean that few gear changes are needed. Only a couple of cogs are sufficient for most curving roads. Or for the curves of Pennsylvania's Pocono International Raceway, where the real revelation was the latest Viper's handling. A new lighter, stiffer frame and aluminum suspension components give it a more responsive feel, while revised suspension geometry adds just a touch of understeer. The effect is to change the basic Viper character from twitchy and somewhat unforgiving to solid and friendly with loads of grip. It's like crossing a slot car with a locomotive and more fun than a barrel full of Ferraris. Though compared to the Viper's close-fitting cockpit, even a Ferrari is roomy. The dash is wide and smooth, but low-cost look plastics take away from its flowing lines. It does, however, now feature dual airbags and a standard CD player. More pleasing to the eye are the new gauges, including an electronically driven 200 mile per hour speedometer. You face them by squeezing into more body-hugging buckets, which feature better support and over two inches more travel front to rear. But the real comfort innovation is a set of adjustable foot pedals. Turning a knob under the dash moves the entire pedal assembly up to four inches closer to the driver. Improved comfort leads to longer drives, where GTS owners will also come to appreciate their Viper's improved ride. Owners will even be able to go on overnight trips, thanks to the coupe configuration's surprisingly large cargo area. Though we must point out that those long drives also reveal a few more squeaks and rattles than a top-line flagship model should have. Of course, many Viper fans will point out in return that it was designed as a back-to-basics machine. But in GTS form, the Viper is also now a remarkably usable supercar. A car that our friends at Automobile Magazine described as a serious car with genuine heritage. The price is reasonable, and the experience of owning one ought to be extraordinary. We agree on both points. With a $66,000 base price, plus $2,600 gas guzzler tax, $3,700 luxury tax, and $700 for delivery, the total price of $73,000 is well below that of many less interesting machines. And its raw aggression now tempered just barely with real-world usability makes for an astounding driving experience. Back in the 60s, Peter Brock's drivers had to stay on the racetrack for the kind of driving experience the Dodge Viper GTS owners can experience anywhere they want. Isn't progress wonderful? <laughs>